welcome to gemchem now today's video is on periodic properties part 9 video and here we will deal with atomic and ionic radius now before starting if you have not watched periodic properties part 8 video you can watch it i will give the link in the description box as well as the i button present above this video now let us start today's video now what about atomic and ionic radii it stands for the distance of nucleus and the outermost shell of electron that is it is the distance between the nucleus present in the middle of the atom and the outermost shell electron that is if this is the outermost shell electron then the distance between these two is being depicted by atomic and ionic radii now how it can be determined now direct determination of this radius is not possible because isolation of single atom or ion is difficult so therefore the measurement can be done using indirect way how can it be either by locating the electron cloud of atom or by locating the nucleus of atom now the measured distance between the nuclei of two bonded atoms are called intermolecular distance whereas the measured distance between nuclei of two ions in crystal are called interionic distance and these are measured these two are measured with the help of x ray diffraction nuclear magnetic resonance nmr and electron diffraction now we will see in details about the atomic radii now these atomic radii can be subdivided into two parts that is covalent radii and van der waals radii now what is covalent radii it is the half of the distance between the nuclei of two like atoms bonded together by a single covalent bond this important point is they should be bonded by a single covalent bond now see the distance from the nucleus to the average middle portion of this bond is the radius that is ra now what is van der waals radii it is the half the distance between two atoms within two adjacent molecules are called van der waals radii so it is the distance between the two atoms within two adjacent molecules that is if this is a molecule and this is a molecule then the distance between these two atom is considered as the van der waals radii now let us see what is covalent radii now covalent radii are essentially single bond covalent radii okay now let us consider a homonuclear diatomic molecule a2 where a and a are bonded together by a covalent bond that is this one then consider this two atoms as effective spheres in this molecule the internuclear or bond distance is given by daa which is ra that is distance of this one plus distance of this one that is plus ra ra is given by daa by 2 ra is a single bond covalent radii of atom a now if a heteroatom molecule ab is taken where a and b are bonded together by purely single covalent bond then it will be given as the sum of these two radii that is ra and rb and their electronegativity of a and b should be equal if c if this electronegativity of these two are not equal that is here in this case if chi a is not equal to chi b then the experimental value is less than obtained by adding okay that is this one the value will be less than this one why this deviation occurs due to the number of facts first is electronegativity difference of a and b multiplicity in single bond that it can assume a character of double or triple bond and the electron electron repulsion between two adjacent atom now in order to rationalize the ionic character of ab bond showmaker and stevenson suggested an empirical relation between interatomic distance and covalent radii and that relation is d ab r a plus r b minus 
bracket chi A minus chi B. Okay. And the relation shows that the heteropolar bonds always shorter than the calculated on the basis of homopolar bond. This relation is mostly valid only other than few exceptions. Normally, the covalent radii is considered as single bond covalent radii, but it may be double or triple bond. And then they are known as multiple covalent radii. Now we will see for van der Waal radii. Now see, it is half of the distance between two nuclei of non-bonded neighboring atoms that is they are not bonded of two adjacent molecules. Okay, now what do we mean by van der Waal force? Now in solid state, non-metallic elements usually exist as an aggregation of molecules. The bonding within the non-metallic molecule is largely covalent in character and the molecules are stick together by force which is known as van der Waal force. Now this half the distance between the two nuclei of non-bonded neighboring atoms of two adjacent molecules is given by van der Waals radii. Now this radii is non-bonded. When the two molecules approach each other without forming a chemical bond, there will be a slight attraction between them due to mutual distortion of their electron cloud and this is known as van der Waals forces and this is absent in gaseous state of matter and is applicable for liquid and solid state but holds very good in solid state at very low temperature right now we will see for chlorine example for chlorine covalent radii is rc 0 0.99 and for van der Waal it is 1.8 okay now what we see that covalent radius is smaller than the van der Waals radii this is important now we will go for metallic or crystal radii now this is applicable for metal atoms which are assumed to be closely packed spheres in the metallic crystal bounded together by metallic bonds okay and it is defined as the half of the distance between the nuclei of two adjacent metal atoms in the metallic closed packed crystal lattice. Now, metallic bond is 10 to 15 percent higher than the single covalent bond radii. Why this is so? Because the metallic bond controls, which controls the proximity of the metallic atoms to one another in the metallic crystal lattice is not at all localized bond like covalent bond. So, the bonded metal atoms in the metallic crystal lattice are not drawn close to each other as they are in covalent bond. Therefore, we see that the result is metallic bond is 10 to 15 percent higher than single covalent radii. Now, we see metallic radii are smaller than van der Waals radii. So, why this is so? This is because the bonding forces in net crystal are much stronger than van der Waals forces. Now, we see for noble gases, there is no covalent bond, right? And as van der Waals forces does not exist in gaseous state, so in case of noble gas atoms, there is neither covalent forces nor van der Waals forces. Only in solid state, the van der Waals forces exist in inert gases and in that case, covalent radii is equal to van der Waals radii. So, you have to remember this for the noble gases. Now, we will deal with ionic radii. It is defined as the distance between nucleus of an ion and the point up to which the nucleus has influence on its electron cloud. Not total, that is not up to the valence, but up to which the nucleus has an influence. This is important. Now, see, Pauling made some semi-theoretical approach. He assumed that size of an ion is detected by distribution of outermost electron which depends on the nuclear attraction. Now, since the inner electrons are utilized to screen, we know the nuclear charge, the nuclear attraction on outermost electron will be a function of effective nuclear charge. 
and what is the symbol for effective nuclear charge that is z star we have already dealt with it on the basis of ionic radius that is r ion which is inversely proportional to z star we can give it like this that is r equal to c n this is a constant and z star this is a constant which is determined by the total number of electrons less or more required to get a noble gas configuration now for isoelectric ions in chemical composition we can get the value okay suppose for if we consider naf so r na plus by r na f r f minus equals to z star f minus by z star na plus okay and from here we can get the effective nuclear charge by using slater's rule by the method of screening constants and we can obtain it now the calculation of ionic radii using pauling's method will be dealt in a separate video just after this so this much for today thank you for watching do not forget to like share subscribe and comment